So this will be a bit longer voiceover video with the Prezi that I presented in class. And I'm just going to be going over, um, just like I did in class, the what, the where, and the how of photosynthesis and a brief introduction to respiration. So as I told you, we're going to look at uh, photosynthesis in kind of three aspects. We'll look at the what, and um, we'll basically understand how photosynthesis involves two distinct and but interconnected processes, the light-dependent reactions and the light-independent reactions. And then we'll look at those processes as either the capture and transformation of solar energy or the reduction of CO2 into the synthesis of a sugar. We'll look at where this is occurring. We'll look at it from the whole plant all the way down to the um, molecular level. And then we'll look at how is this happening. And when we look at how it's happening, I really like to rely on the Z scheme. So the Z scheme looks at the energy state of electrons that are moving through this process. Photosynthesis is essentially a series of oxidation and reduction reactions. And just a reminder, we talked a little about oxidation and reduction reactions. We said oxidation was the loss of electrons. So LEO, loss of electrons, is oxidation. L-E-O, LEO. Gain of electrons, GER, G-E-R, gain electrons is reduction. So essentially we're looking at a series of oxidation and reduction reactions. In this slide, I'm really looking at the big picture, the what. So the what is transformation of light energy to chemical energy. And some of the things we talked about include this equation for photosynthesis on the top. And a lot of you have probably seen this equation for photosynthesis. And it's a little helpful in the sense that we can see what the reactants are. So we have CO2 and water, and then what that would yield us, the products, we would get sugar and oxygen. But in this kind of simplification, I think it actually contributes to significant confusion because we talked about some key takeaways when we're trying to understand photosynthesis. And one key takeaway is understanding where did that oxygen actually come from? And we learned that the oxygen is actually the result of the lysis of the water molecule. So the water molecule donates electrons back into the system. So there's a term we call photolysis. So the water molecule is split apart into electrons into oxygen and into protons. And um, the, the splitting of that water molecule actually yields oxygen. And then another thing that we looked at, and we looked at that cartoon down below, um, we looked at another major misconception of photosynthesis, and that was where does the biomass come from in the plant? And for a long time, we did not understand that the weight of the plant, the actual mass of the plant, is primarily coming from CO2 or the carbon in CO2 when that is fixed into a biologically usable form. And I'll let you tab through um, the slideshow so you can kind of see the experiment that's described in that cartoon below, but this is one of the major takeaways from this slide. I also like the cartoon picture of the chloroplast uh, here. And in this cartoon picture, we can see a chloroplast, and it nicely shows us the two-part process of photosynthesis. Here you have the light reaction in the thylakoid lumen, and here we have the light-independent reactions in the stroma. And basically we see all of the reactants. We have light and water. Um, and yielding these high energy molecules, ATP and NADPH2, that are used in the Calvin cycle. And the product of that would be sugar. And of course, the product of the light reaction here 
would be oxygen. We'll look at this part in more detail, and of course we have some videos, but this I think is a very nice cartoon of the reaction and helps you to sort of remember the process. This slide um, helps us look at the where, and it's really just a reminder to you to, when we're thinking about photosynthesis, that we think about this at different levels or different hierarchies. So the first picture A is showing us thinking about photosynthesis at the whole plant level, or maybe even photosynthesis at a population level. And then the slide next to that is um, getting us to think about photosynthesis in the organ level or the tissue level. And this should be kind of familiar to you because we asked this question several times in both lecture and in our uh, lab material, in our homework material, we said, well, how does the organization of that tissue facilitate photosynthesis? So I think it's easy for you to see how we could ask all other kinds of questions regarding photosynthesis, um, looking at it at any, any of these levels. And this cartoon shows us the organization of the chloroplast. And the important takeaway here is all of the surface area that's created by the membrane that's creating these uh, grana or stacks of thylakoid. And these are just membranes where those key complexes are embedded. The importance of this is that we have a lot of surface area for lots of reactions to take place and we have created compartments. So we can separate the different chemical reactions that are occurring. So remember we talked about the light independent reactions and the light dependent reactions. The light dependent reactions are occurring here in our thylakoid lumen, and the light independent reactions are occurring in the stroma. And here's our beautiful thylakoid membrane. Let me orient you. Here's the stroma. Up here is our lumen. And in this picture, we have our photosystem 2, cytochrome B6F, photosystem 1, FNR, ATP synthase. And I'm actually, I'm just showing you this to orient you again. I'm going to zoom ahead and show you another picture and kind of walk through the, the process of the, the light dependent reactions in a better slide. But I just like to show you several different kind of cartoon versions of what this thylakoid membrane looks like to help you sort of visualize the process. And of course, remember there's trillions of these. So plants have millions and millions and millions of chloroplasts and then embedded within the membranes of these chloroplasts are trillions of these key complexes. So we're just looking at one, but Remember, of course, this would be um, times a trillion. So this is a cartoon of photosystem two. And we, when we talk about the process of the light independent reaction, we'll often begin with photosystem two, just because it's easiest to kind of create a linear process. Um, but remember, these are kind of happening so quickly. It's, it's actually literally almost impossible to say, this is where it's all beginning, right? So. We're using this as kind of a model to show a linear process. So here in photosystem two, I have my antenna pigments, and you saw these in the app that you used, or you will use if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. And I have chlorophyll molecules, and these long skinny ones with the orange ends, those are carotenoids. And then I have an oxygen evolving complex, and we'll come back to that, this is where my water molecule will be attached, and I have my reaction center chlorophyll molecules. I have my first electron acceptor of a series of electron acceptors. And we talked about the fact that these antenna pigments, they're able to take up sunlight energy at specific wavelengths. They become very excited, and they share that excitation energy or resonance transfer energy, they share that with this reaction center chlorophyll molecules. Now these accessory pigments, they do not share electrons. They share that excitement, that energy. But um, they funnel all that energy to this reaction center that become energized enough to be able to share an electron or share electrons 
with the first of a series of electron transfer um, molecules. Now, that means that they have become oxidized. So remember, L-E-O, lose electron oxidized. So they lose electrons, and we'll look at how those electrons move in an upcoming slide. But I want to jump down to this oxygen evolving complex. This is where the water molecule comes in, and it's very important. So once these reaction pair lose their electrons, the reaction can't continue. This is why we call this particular process non-cyclic. So for the reaction to continue, there has to be new electrons back into the system. And those electrons will come from the photolysis of this water molecule. So the water molecule is split. It donates electrons back to, these elect uh, to this reaction center pair. The protons, or the H pluses, they will go into the lumen to contribute to that proton gradient, or the hydrogen gradient, more hydrogen on one side of a membrane than the other side of the membrane. And the oxygen is actually just a waste product. And we'll get molecular oxygen after two water molecules have been split. Then we get that O2, molecular oxygen. So this slide shows us the whole story. Here I have my thylakoid membrane and all those key complexes embedded on the thylakoid membrane. And I described to you what was happening in photosystem 2. That's what we're seeing in this cartoon. We see the light energy trans or picked up by these accessory pigments, or antenna pigments, I'm sorry. That energy funneled to the reaction center chlorophyll molecules. There's a series of electron transfers facilitated by mobile electron carriers and the cytochrome B6F complex that's really facilitating the move, the transfer of electrons. This is important because those electrons then go from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. We're basically gleaning the energy from those energized electrons. And we're doing that primarily by creating this high H plus or hydrogen concentration every time we're passing that along. Um, so we get a high concentration of protons on this lumen side of our thylakoid, lower concentration on the, on the stroma side. So here you see stroma, low hydrogen concentration, lumen or thylakoid space high. That allows us to take advantage of this ATP synthase those hydrogens will move through, they'll diffuse through this ATP synthase complex and phosphorylate ADP to ATP. Additionally, so that's one of our high energy molecules. Additionally, we have those electrons moving through, get re-energized in photosystem two, very similar process to what happened in photosystem one, with the exception of there's no need to oxidize water molecule again. Those electrons then are used to uh, reduce NADP to a high energy molecule, NADPH. So our high energy molecules, NADPH and ATP, we'll see the, those going to the Calvin cycle, the light independent reactions. This happens in the stroma. I will, in my next brief video clip, I'm going to discuss the Z scheme and the Calvin cycle. So we'll wrap it up in the next video clip. Just so I don't have to make these too long for you and um, they become boring. Thank you. I'll see you in the next clip.